G'day everyone. I get a lot of questions about my Maestro FSH and um, a lot of those are fault diagnosing questions, why doesn't mine work? And admittedly mine's set up, it's configured in a very specific way and I'm just going to go over um, how I've got mine set up and also I'm just going to provide you with the voltages that I've got on my ICs and transistors so that you can check them with yours. All the voltages will be measured with the dials at 12 o'clock. I'm not entirely sure what these two switches, the up, down and the FSH um, switches are actually set to, so uh, you'll have to play around with those when you're measuring yours, but um, yeah, all the dials will be at 12 o'clock. I'm just going to tape them down so they don't move around when I'm taking the measurements. Before we even look at the voltages, uh, it pays just to check the schematic, just if you can see some logical sense of what's actually going on. You don't need to be an electronics engineer to, um, to do this. Um, some of it's quite straightforward. So, for instance, if we have a look at the, um, at the power section up the top here, you can see that um, there's, a few, there's a few pins that are connected to ground, and you can also see this is the input, the voltage, your 9 volt power um, DC jack comes in through here, and then it hits the charge pump, and the charge pump will do something with that power, and in this case, it's flipping it to to point uh, uh, to negative nine volts. You can see um, that this line is sorry, this line here. It's backwards in the camera. This line here is negative nine volts, and you can see that you've got negative um, negative eight volts and negative nine volts. So if you've got access to the bottom of the board, you can actually check those two voltages to make sure that they're correct. Because if they're not correct, then nothing else is going to be correct because that just continues on to the rest of the rest of the circuit. And then up the top here, you've got the plus versions of those two. There's a lot of other things that you can check on the schematic. I mean, anything else, anything that's got a ground symbol should be should be zero volts. And if it's not, then there's obviously something wrong. So when I actually originally set up this pedal, um, I used the parts listed on Tonepad's part list. Uh, for the transistors, uh, I used a the 2N3904 picked for noise as he's got on there and the BF245A, um, three of those for the FETs and I found that with this particular combination I could just m I could just mess around with that trim pot and I would just I just could not get it to to oscillate and to um, to make the filter sample hold um, effect noises. Um, it wasn't actually until I replaced the 29 2N3904 with a 2N5088 and the FETs I replaced with the J201 and I was just looking up a post that I actually um, actually made when I was when I was fault diagnosing the the, um, the pedal and I, I've, I've written in there that as soon as I actually changed it to that combination I didn't even have to touch the trim pot it just it just came to life pretty much straight away so if you're not getting anything out of it or you're just getting like a dull si signal I'm pretty sure I was just getting like a like a muffled guitar signal out the other side. Um, if you're getting something like that, maybe give, maybe try experimenting with those with those transistors. Um, also, Q3, the 2N3906, I didn't have to change. That's still a two, uh, 2N3906, and um, uh, and it works with that just fine. So if you're checking your FSH and you're continually plugging it up to your guitar and um, going back and forwards with it, trying to work out whether it's going to work or not. I can tell you straight away that if this Q3 doesn't have a uh, oscillating voltage on it, um, the the pedal just won't work. Um, there's there's no point even testing it until you have uh, a voltage that 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 fluctuates on Q3. So, for instance, on mine, you can see it's fluctuating here, and I'll just do the maximum minimum so we can see. Uh, what the maximum minimum is for uh, this is actually the emitter on Q3. So I've got um, a minimum of negative 1.3 and a maximum of uh, 0.57 um, volts for that. And then on the other side, I've just got negative 7 volts. Um, it um, sort of fluctuates a bit, but um, not a hell of a lot. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, negative. Uh, so actually, no, it is. It does move a bit. Uh, negative uh, six point two, and um, a maximum of negative seven. I just forgot to mention one thing too. Um, I'm just adding this to the video. Uh, I originally used an LT1054 because I had I, I've had reliability issues with Max 1044s. I, I, 
they just burn out so quickly. They seem really fragile, um, but I never have that issue with the LT1054, and in most cases, the LT1054 is fine. But um, I recently found with a Flanger 301, I was getting a, a heap of noise with that was just unusable. It was the, the, the noise was on an offensive level. Um, but when I whacked in a um, TC1044, uh, the low noise version, which I think is the CSPA or SCPA, uh, the, low, the low noise version of the TC1044, I noticed that it um, drastically actually improved the, the noise. There still was some noise, but it wasn't as bad. This Maestro doesn't have anywhere near as much noise as the Flanger 301, but it does have some noise, so I would want to, I would think that the best course of action would be to use the, no, the low noise, um, the low, the, the low noise charge pump just to, you know, like minimize the amount of noise you're going to get out of it. So yeah, use the TC1044, uh, the, the low noise version, which I think is something like CSPA or something, something like that. It's got that, um, that, uh, suffix on the end of it. So I'll post up some voltages at the end of the video just so you can check yours with mine um, and to see um, if, if they're in the ballpark. Uh, all, the, all the measurements will have been made with all the dials at 12 o'clock. Um, I'll do the measurements for, um, uh, I'll leave it either up or down, um, but I'll do the measurements for um, uh, filter, sample, uh, filter and then sample and hold. Uh, because I, some people have issues with one side and not with the other, so I'll, I'll do um, both of the um, voltages for that. So hopefully that helps you to get it going. Um, usually with these things, um, it is just a solder bridge or something like that, but with this one it's particularly complicated because you've got to make sure that not only have you built a pretty complicated pedal, um, you've also picked the right uh, components um, and that they're functioning properly. So that fluctuating voltage on Q3 was pretty much what saved me because as soon as I knew that that had to fluctuate, I could just mess around with the transistors until I got that to fluctuate. So it, was, it made it quicker and uh, less confusing, I guess you'd say. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're into electronics and um, do-it-yourself guitar pedals and uh, things like that. Thanks for watching.